Hi, this is Mike Hendrickson from AI in New York City. I'm here with Fayez from Intel. Fayez, how you doing? Good, how are you? Good. So Intel, I, I think a lot of people think of you as a silicon company, and, and yet AI mm -hmm. is like uh, kind of eating the world or, or major part of your, your future. Right. Can you unpack a little bit about your product roadmap and where you guys are going? Absolutely. So, um, you know, as Intel, I think one of our biggest goals is to <coughs> you know, uh, shorten the innovation cycle when it comes to AI, right? And uh, a big part of that is silicon. So, you know, one of the things we are doing uh, really well, I think, is uh, building the next generation of processes that will accelerate a lot of these AI deep learning workloads. Uh, but it's a lot more than that. It's not just about hardware acceleration. It's about sort of building the right software stack that will let our customers at enterprise clients uh, build and scale these models uh, to really large deployments, right? So a lot of our efforts are going into building the right set of software tools and enabling, enablement uh, tools that will let our clients do that, right? Uh, so <coughs> we have a pretty, really strong roadmap of both silicon and software tools that will help our clients get there. So, uh, you know, Intel is much more uh, than a silicon company today, so we're investing heavily in the AI space. Was that part of AI's <laughs> problem back in the late 80s? We didn't have the computing power mm -hmm. to actually do what we need to do, and we're now at the point in time where AI is a reality, or can be a reality? Yeah, that's part of it. So, so you know, the, the compute was definitely a bottleneck, uh, right? So today we have uh, really fast processes that can process like really large amounts of data. But I think the, the other side of that equation is also the availability of data itself, right? So the way a lot of these AI models work is you have to literally train the model just like you would train a human brain, right? It's, uh, uh, and, and data is a big component of that, right? And so uh, with the explosion of big data over the last uh, decade or so, uh, you know, a lot of our enterprise clients now have access to that data that they can then use to, to, uh, to train these models. So essentially it's a, it's a mix of you know, compute being where it is today and uh, the availability of data to support that AI model. Right? You mentioned a lot of your partners that you're working with. Mm -hmm. Are there industries that are going in <laughs> quicker than yep. others, and are there ones that should be going in quicker? Uh, Absolutely, so I mean the more you know, popular ones, like the automotive space for example, I mean you hear a lot about so autonomous driving, right. uh, AI is a big component of enabling that. Uh, but we're also seeing, we're seeing adoption across the board, so it's you know, healthcare, financial services, um, you know, medical imaging, and spe specifically within the healthcare space. Uh, we're also seeing a lot of interest in uh, sort of the insurance, uh, media companies, right? They want to be able to, um, you know, process and uh, tag a lot of their content that they've produced over the last few decades. So there's a lot of interest across the board. Um, you know, one of the more active industries I think is the well, the industrial space, right? So we are doing a lot of work with clients where, uh, you know, they're using drones to capture images in real time and do inference, uh, looking for anomalies in in, uh, in industrial deployments, for example. So there's a lot of interest across the board. Um, but again, it's very early, right? So a lot of our clients are still just starting to understand the implications of AI and what it means to them and how it's going to affect their industry. So a lot of work that we do is uh, sort of helping them understand this, this implication, enabling a lot of these use cases and getting them started. But then once that happens, then they start looking at sort of really large scale deployments and that's where the real power of Intel comes in because we can really enable that end to end. So you work with your partners from <coughs> basically the whole stack. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, you guys have from silicon all the way up to managing and deploying mm -hmm. at a consumer front end? Well, where it's it, learning about consumer behavior and then predicting? Sure, yeah, so the way we look at it, I mean, it's, it's uh, yes, it's up and down the stack, but it's also all the way from the data center to the edge, right? So if you think about sort of where we put our investments, uh, your silicon is a big component of it, obviously, right? But uh, you know, building the right set of tools in the software stack. We also have data scientists, for example, on our team that can help, uh, you know, sit side by side with the clients and actually co-develop some of these solutions. But also, as you think about sort of deploying AI, right, uh, if you look at sort of the overall, uh, you know, workflow, you're, you're talking about sort of training an AI model and then eventually maybe deploying it, not only in the data center, but potentially on the edge as well. Right? So you can train these models on a large scale data center deployment, but may, you know, maybe you're deploying it on, on a farm or maybe on a drone. Pollution right? sensor or something. Exactly, right. yeah, and right. so our capabilities run across the board with respect to both hardware and software, but also, you know, from the data center to a gateway to an edge, right? And that's where the real sort of 
uh, influence of Intel comes in because we can develop and support all those sorts of different, different so deployment models. The, the edge is a really interesting place, uh, and the edge typically mean IoT devices and things that are out in the wild. Your platform, your your offerings mm -hmm. work with uh, unstructured, like things that w we may not know that well? It does, so in terms of uh, the types of data we can support, I mean, we are looking at, if you look at sort of the broad AI space and where uh, the majority of interest is in, a lot of it is around imaging, for example, mm -hmm. but there's also things like natural language processing, uh, speech understanding, uh, you know, you're looking at sort of time series data in the financial services industry, for example. But time series is also very prevalent in the IoT space. So you have sensors that are collecting right. a lot of data and you want to, you know, as you're measuring these things, you can start to predict, let's say, a failure of a piece of equipment based on the sensor data that you're getting. Right? Okay. Um, so as a software stack, we can support all those different types of use cases. So the way we look at the world really is uh, around the fact that like what what are the types of data you're trying to process and the software stack is robust enough where we can support all those different types of use cases but also from a hardware perspective then uh, you have different constraints based on where you're doing training and where you're doing inference for example right so if it's on the edge you'll have you know specific power requirements and we, we build a silicon to sort of uh, you know support all those different types of workloads given those constraints right? so it's a really good sort of mix of both hardware and software to support uh, different things. So if you and I sit down 12 mm -hmm. months from now and have this conversation, I actually it's not 12 months, it's in April, mm -hmm. which is probably a good time frame, you know, from, the, what's that, seven months from now? This industry changes so quick. Mm -hmm. What would you like to see change in the industry, and then what would you like to see Intel doing differently that you're not doing today? I think, uh, with respect to the industry itself, I think, uh, a lot of our clients, again, they're just starting to understand what AI means to them, right? And so, you know, from an adoption perspective, I've seen a real acceleration in terms of, you know, where we have come uh, in the last, like, you know, 18, 24 months, right? And I, I continue to see that acceleration. So there's a lot of interest, there's a lot of, uh, you know, real world deployments happening today that wasn't happening, let's like, say, 12 months ago. And so, for me, that that's a that's a really good indicator of where AI is going. So it's starting off as, you know, a small experiment, let's say, in a in a innovation center within a large enterprise. But now you're seeing adoption across the board, across the different BUs, and there are specific use cases that we are we are targeting. Uh, so that's great, and that's what I think that continue that will continue to happen. Right? Uh, from an Intel perspective, I think you know what again, uh, we want to be treated as we want to be sort of the key allies and partners for our customers and clients with respect to AI, right? And so as they step back and think about uh, their AI strategy, uh, uh, you know, we want to be there to sort of help define that and support that over time. So, you know, whether it's a small experiment in, in a lab within a large enterprise or if you're, you know, thinking about sort of really large scale, scale deployments across the, the, uh, the company, uh, those are, you know, different types of uh, uh, things that we can support, and uh, I think we see that as a priority. Is we want to be able to, uh, you know, irrespective of where you are, we want to be able to support whatever it is you're doing, and then help you craft that strategy as you go forward. Excellent, Fayez. We look forward to our new, absolutely, our new collaboration Thanks and working with you guys in San Francisco. Thank you. Thank you.